So here are my PV panels. There's 13 LG panels rated at 300 watts each. So that gives me 3.9 kilowatts of available power on my roof. This system that I bought second hand off Facebook nearly two years ago came with all the rails and all the cabling and it's worked absolutely brilliantly. I've been really, really pleased with it. So let's see how this actually works with my, my energy products and also the Sunamp heat batteries. So my Sunamp heat batteries were provided to me for free as part of the SMILE project, which is trying to absorb some of the excess electricity that's coming from the island of Rousey, where a community turbine was regularly getting turned off because of too much electricity on the grid. So here are my uh, three Sunamp heat batteries. The top unit is being put, used as part of the project, um, but the bottom two are powered off my solar. So just to show you what's going on today, we've got a nice sunny day outside here on Orkney. Well, you can see that there. I'm getting two kilowatts, 1.7 kilowatts off the PV. It's as high as 3.9 kilowatts when there's some direct sunlight, and that will change. Now, obviously, that there, that emblem there, you see the sun's just come out again. 2.2 kilowatts are going into heating up my water. So basically, what happens is we have one of these. Um, this is a small version of what's going on inside these boxes. Now I'm going to explain it in layman's terms because that's the best way that I can understand it. These are like hand warmers, you're all familiar with these. And then what happens with these hand warmers in this liquid pouch, you have a little metal tab inside. So if you click this, you'll see what happens, which you're all familiar with. And as you can see, that chemical reaction takes place, and as it spreads, I love watching this. That gets hot. I mean really, really hot. As you can see, all the liquid turns into a solid and that chemical reaction that takes place results in heat. Now that is basically what's going on in these boxes. And the people who have developed it, the Sunamp uh, business, they've developed a way of controlling that reaction. Now to turn this back into a liquid state, like any hand warmer, you put this in boiling water, which obviously requires energy. And that boiling water will return this solid, now solid, in back into a liquid state, ready for the next click of the metal tab. So when this has activated and provided us with hot water, it needs re-energising again, if you like, with some electricity, which comes off my solar roof, off my PV panels. So that is basically what it is, and it's a very efficient way of doing it because I'm not, I haven't got a huge amount of hot, cold water, hot water in a normal immersion tank that needs constant topping up um, because this heats a very limited amount of water uh, ready to be accessed and that, for that uh, heat exchange to take place. So yeah, the Sunamp heat batteries are fantastic. So welcome to Outdoor Orkney. I just thought I'd answer some questions that people have been asking on Twitter when I said I was going to do this video. And so I've got printed off, still windy, a host of questions. So I'll do my best newsreader impression. Um, so PCM materials or phase change materials is basically what the Sunamp chargers run off, which as you saw earlier, is one of these. Now people have been asking, well, what is the substance? Is it toxic? Is it nasty? Well, this is sodium acetate. Now this sodium acetate, do you know, it's also in them, salt and vinegar crisps. An ingredient of salt and vinegar crisps is sodium acetate. So there is a connection between these two. He lost my notes. <laughs> So, uh, one of the questions I had asked by the wonderful Ewan McTurk, now if you've not checked out Ewan's YouTube channel, I will put a link here. Check out Plug Life TV, absolutely brilliant. Anyway, Ewan asked the question, which is cheaper and which is more efficient for households with home renewables like solar panels? One, install a conventional battery like a power wall. 
uh, charge using the excess solar and use it to power a heat pump or two install a sun amp and use it to provide heat from excess solar good question you in it all depends on your individual house and property in my opinion now personally for my property which is a modern build it's quite boring compared to beautiful Orkney cottages but it's highly insulated costs peanuts to heat and run so if you've got a highly insulated property such as mine then your biggest draw on electricity is to heat your water it's not actually to heat the home because it's so well insulated so for me personally it was more efficient to get a sun amp to get the sun amp batteries because uh, heating water for most households equates to around 20 percent of their actual energy electricity gas usage so a sizable chunk we all use to get hot water so that's why i initially went for the sun amp uh, heat batteries so you need to ask yourself what's your biggest use in your home uh, electricity wise next question was from ev and retro ross thank you ev and retro ross do they work with a combi boiler and no hot water storage is it hot water only or heating as well yes the sun amp heat batteries can be used with a combi boiler combi boilers take a cold feed from the cold water system but with the sun amps they can preheat that cool water so basically the combi boiler has less work to do so they can be used for that and they also can be used to heat your home with a wet radiator system like a conventional piped system to heat your home but we haven't got piped heating here because we've got no mains gas on Orkney so we haven't got a combi boiler we haven't got a wet heating system it's just basically air source heating and the sun amp heat batteries for our hot water eco-friendly delivery is limited like the sound of you um, here's a few nice to knows off the top of my head cost benefit life expectancy space required quite a few questions in here any restrictions on where they can be installed no uh, time disruption associated with the installation I think it was an afternoon um, any noise whilst charging or in use no no noise at all you probably hear one of my chickens yes um, now these sun amps have been tested to 41,000 cycles so charged up used charged up used 41,000 times now if you charge and use or cycle one of these sun amp batteries once a day which is what we're doing 41,000 days is 110 years so quite a long lifespan and they're continuing to test so they don't know whether 110 years is their maximum life it's ongoing they've not had enough time yet but you know I think 110 years will outlast me um, and there's still not been any degradation with the phase change materials in that time the cost they're not the cheapest so a hot water cylinder is around 240 pounds for a conventional hot water cylinder these units are around 1400 pound each and I've got three of them equating to 4200 pounds there goes a the chicken um, so they're not cheap but like I said in the video I had these as part of the um, smart smile project uh, for um, Orkney Paul Martin hello Paul ask the size of the system cost of your application just covered uh, heating hot water or both which well, just the hot water um, I'm interested in a system for both applications to reduce my gas use using so surplus solar power in summer and negative price electricity in winter uh, sustainable heat is the nut we need to crack agree with you there sir I think I've just answered it I've got um, three three and a half kilowatt units boxes that you would have seen earlier and they just heat my hot water i've also covered the aspect of the cost as well uh, simon chetwind sorry if i said your name wrong simon he wants to know the real basics like what are they phase change materials how do they work i think i showed it in the uh, video and how do you use the storage energy well again hope that was explained 
What I haven't mentioned is that each of those three boxes holds around 1.3 litres, just 1.3 litres of water, whereas a conventional uh, hot water cylinder might hold, well our old one held 140 litres. So it's a tiny fraction that has to be kept warm all the time, but then when you ask for hot water, that freight phase change materials takes kicks in and they can control that reaction and it then creates more hot water. Uh, so that's the basics. Jendi uh, Jidushka, excuse me if I said that wrong, uh, how was it plumbed into the water system? Sole hot water, yes. Are the three heat battery water pipes and wiring done so they can the three connectors one big battery? Yes. <coughs> So they replaced the hot water feed that was there for the old cylinder. And when the sparkies and the plumbers came, like I said, I think they were here for, well, the best part of a day, all told, because there was different trades coming in and out. But within a day, it was, uh, it was all up and running. Uh, they all work together. The top box is going to be independently fed with a communication from Rousey to uh, enable the top one to charge with us too much electricity on the grid so um, that's yet to happen yet to have that box of tricks installed and doc ollie makes a very interesting point he says everyone worries about payback what other house improvements do you expect uh, to pay for themselves back apart from when you sell the economy of eco improvement average is five to seven years i think he's about right and his own experience of a retrofit PV battery and sun amp, um, that's based on that and he's on a 4P export tariff as well. So it's a good point, it's not all about payback, we all do our little bit, we can all help offset <coughs> burning stuff to make electricity, which is happening less and less as we know. Jonathan Thrompstone, good first name Jonathan. Um, how is direct electricity electric transferred to the battery? Phase change materials. And I use a thermal store with immersion elements that they wear out. And I'm guessing that's like a normal immersion heater, I'm not sure. An alternative method would be a bonus. Well again, these heat exchange pipe work within the boxes to take the heat from these phase change materials is basically the way it works. James and Kate. Now you might have heard of James and Kate, good friends of mine in Hinty in Leicestershire. Check out their YouTube channel. Um, James asks, how long before they run cold? Interesting, James. Now, I did have a fault with one of the electronic units. Um, long story short, but there was a fault. So basically there was no power going to the sun amp heat batteries. Fortunately, it was when my wife was away south. For three days, I had enough hot water to wash up and also have a shower every morning and obviously run a hot water sink full of hot water to have a wet shave. I had three days of hot water until this started running cold, which I think was pretty, pretty amazing. So that was good. The costs I've covered earlier, James, um, about £1,400 each. And you were asking as well, um, their efficiency. Well, they're very, very efficient. I think it's about 1% heat loss through phase change materials um, compared to a conventional cylinder. So, you know, they really are super efficient. So what do I want next for my little property here on Orkney? On a day like today, I finished charging the car yesterday. We're still under lockdown, so I can't drive anywhere. So my leaf's charged up to 85% should be 80% according to the dock but at 85% I've unplugged it um, my water again heated up by I think it's quarter past 11 this morning so it's reached maximum temp on both the units so I've just been dumping all this lovely electricity back onto the grid so my next goal would be some battery storage either 5 or 10 kilowatt hour storage the reason I'd like that is that at night time the base load of the house, that's the fridge, air to air, to air source heating, um, our heated tower rail in the bathroom, we leave that on 24-7 because it just 
it keeps the bathroom nice and warm and obviously dries out the uh, towels, hand towel and my bath towel. So having some storage through the night to use what I've made in the day would be absolutely fantastic. So that's my next goal. Um, as regards savings, uh, like I said, this system cost me £2,000. had it fitted by my fantastic chippy friend who lives just over there, uh, Daniel. He helped me fit it. And then another customer of mine who's, who bought a missing leaf, he's a sparky. He helped me wire it up as well. So I did get some expert help. So, you know, around £2,500 all told was the cost of my PV system. Now, by my calculations, we're halving our electricity bill. So around a £600 a year saving is what uh, I'm seeing. So overall, without me rabbiting on, using my crisps to hold down my notes, if you're considering doing something similar to this, you need to consider these following points, just in my opinion. First of all, make sure your house has got good insulation. No point having <coughs> all this great renewable energy if you're just losing it out your roof or out your walls or out your windows. So good insulation in your house is key. Get yourself some PV or a wind turbine. Smart charging for your electric vehicle or a, a sun amp type system with change phase materials and battery storage. Uh, they're the things that you really need to be looking at. Also consider the My Energy products, the Zappi and the Eddy, which is what I use, and the app, absolutely fantastic for seeing what's going on. Um, battery storage, like I said, for, for night time and also for grey days, which we get occasionally on Orkney. There goes my crisps. Um, also look at changing your energy suppliers. I'm with Octopus. I'm going to put a link below in the description. Um, they one of the new, well I say new, they've been around for a few years, with various tariffs. One's called an agile tariff, where basically when there's too much electricity on the grid, they will pay you to use electricity. And they also do an EV go tariff as well. So check out other companies, Bulb, uh, a raft of other companies, but I'm with Octopus, so um, consider them as well. Put a link in below. Uh, leave the comments below as well. Check out my other videos here on YouTube. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and all that carry on. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you found this informative. Not overly technical. There's probably lots and lots of questions you want to ask. So leave it in the comments below and I'll do my best. Right, I'm off for a shower. <laughs>